This is Naked Plan. M I P. With Masamela Matsuma. Mark Thompson. Get woke. All right, folks, we're back live for the longer. We wanted to check in with someone else who makes this little red wagon go when it comes to voter registration and civic participation. That is a national coalition on black civic participation. She also heads the Black Women's Roundtable. They do the annual report um, in terms of where black women are politically, the power of the sister vote. And she's mobilizing. We've been talking to groups. So we talked to NAACP today. We talked to Latasha Brown and Black Voters Matter. We talked to AFSME. These are the people that are mobilizing voters and defending the rights of voters, our votes, which are too often suppressed. We're happy now to have with us from the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation and the Black Women's Roundtable, Queen Melanie Campbell. Hey, sister. Hey, thank you. How are you, my brother? I'm fine. I'm see you. See you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Um, it's it's known to Melanie had her own bout with COVID. Um, and you know, we prayed for her. We're thankful that she's well and better and overcame that. But that's part of the issue, though, isn't it, Melanie? How we as a people are mm -hmm. more susceptible being affected disproportionately. So our votes even tomorrow can affect that. Yeah. And 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 we gotta go to the polls uh knowing that. And so literally um I'm so um thankful to our community for finding the you know going to the polls knowing that there's this pandemic out there. It's it's not a light thing when we know the impact it can have on our communities and it's having on our communities because we are impacted more, our mortality rate is higher. Uh and um so we're taking our lives in our own hands, going to the polls, if we're physically going, but also there's uh, uh, what's on the ballot uh, is justice, is uh, really about life and death issues at the end of the day. Um, so we've got to do what we need to do. Our ancestors went through a whole lot more. Yeah. Does she look like somebody who had COVID, been in the hospital, y'all? Doesn't she look great? You don't want to see those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but we, I look we, back and go, was that me? Yeah, but we but, love like, and I, I, say, I always loved healthcare workers, but I have a, even more. And when I mean healthcare workers, I'm talking about from the doctors to the nurses to the um, uh, uh, nurses' assistants to the people who come clean up and pick up your trash, taking a chance, walking into that room um, every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you are thankful for them. So tell us what the um, um, National Coalition has been doing leading up to Ooh. tomorrow. And are you yeah. are you bearing fruit? But well, yes, I, I would say, first of all, yes. And we've been focusing 10 uh, well, 12 states, um, but we've been working all year. Um, started meeting last year. Because uh, we knew there was two things happening at the same time. Uh, one was the census and the other was the election. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, black um, the black community's voices were heard. Uh, uh, we, we focused primarily on black women and youth uh, through the Black Women's Roundtable, Power of the Vote, and Black Youth Vote, Vote for Justice initiatives. But we were organizing uh, from beginning of the year all the way through to today. Uh, we we're in the South, in Alabama, and Florida, and Georgia, and Mississippi, Louisiana. Uh, we are also working hard in uh, Michigan and, oh, and, oh, and Ohio and Pennsylvania, and then of course in this DC, Maryland, Virginia area where we're headquartered. And we got you got to always take care of home. All politics is local, mm -hmm. and so uh, we look at not just what's on the top of the ticket, but we're organizers in, in places that people may not. Uh, think well. Why the why are they in Louisiana? Well, Louisiana may not be quote unquote a place state, but you got all kind of judgeships and all kind of stuff going on in New Orleans and other places in the state of uh, Louisiana. So we're there. Um, 
Um, and so the biggest thing, of course, these last um, really three months has been, and I will go a little further, but after COVID, we had to re redesign what we were doing, right? So we had to find a way to keep pushing the message out about the importance of, of the census would do too. And then it was about getting out as we started uh, seeing some of the challenges um, and we, as you know, we do a big unity table to try to get all of our, or many of our organizations as possible to work together so we can have more impact. We put out something called, are you vote ready? And really started focusing on getting our community ready, encouraging them to, to, to vote absentee or early vote, have a plan. And if you don't want to do that, be ready for election day. Then we also knew this was around the time that uh, uh, Congressman Lewis uh, passed away and, and um, Reverend Dr. C.T. Vivian. Um, and that was really uh, thinking about uh, the fact that you had 250,000 poll workers who were shorted. So we started doing that and recruiting that in the name of, of, of um, Congressman Lewis and, and Dr. Vivian uh, with something called New Era, New Era Foot Social. So that's been the summer pushing that, obviously registration. But and now we've been for the last two months or so, I guess, on when I say we, I mean the people who are leading the work we, it, as well as our national groups working together. Just pushing to make sure our vote uh, turns out, but also that it gets counted. Uh, we uh, uh, were a plaintiff, the National Coalition was, uh, with a lawsuit that the Lawyers Committee filed, and people may or may not have heard about uh, in Michigan, where the 85,000 households were called by these um, folks with these robocalls trying to scare people into not voting. So voter suppression comes in all forms, and people are trying to give people bad information so they won't go vote. So we won that case last week. And so those people not only can't send anything out like that, but the judge said, you have to now call all of those same households that you gave that, told those lies to, right? We always like to say misinformation, but it was lies. They knew it was lies. <laughs> you have to tell the people the truth and that you gave them bad information um, as a part of what the quote unquote restitution was. Um, so we're also you know, concerned about the, um, uh, blatant uh, suppression that's going on from the White House, right? From the White House, from state governors, from state legislatures. I've never seen anything like what we're going through when people are filing lawsuits to stop people's vote from being counted when they've done, the, they've followed the rules. And now all of a sudden states' rights is not uh, the, law, the law of the land for, for conservatives. All of a sudden you want to change the rules and find a way uh, to have control over the, the outcome by uh, dismissing hundreds of thousands of votes in some what they call battleground states. So yeah, yeah. The eighty-five thousand robocalls. Who made those calls? There were a couple of um, operatives. I would say um, political operatives who were really just trying to get uh, focus on black and brown communities, poor communities to get them not to vote. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, were, was was there any evidence that they were related to the White House? Um, not not directly, but they are definitely were doing it from from all all indication. It was really to get, have a partisan advantage for the current uh, president. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But, but they were they they weren't charged with that. They were charged for for you know uh, illegally voting rights violations and, and and things like that. And so that restitution. All those same households, right? So on tomorrow, we have to be on alert because we know they're going to try some funny business. I think they've already telegraphed one thing they're going to do. Whereas, yeah. as we know, most mail-in ballots in most states are not finished being counted on election day. That usually goes yeah. a little bit beyond. It well, the votes don't always get counted. You know, you're supposed to be about a month before they're even certified, right? right in most right, places. Right, so right. one thing our people need to know, because it's all of this, this that's misinformation. If it's not counted on election day, then it's not, there's not you can't do all of that. You have um, enough information when you can, you can unofficial, what they call unofficial results right. until they're certified and, and and locally and in the state and then eventually certified for federal races, it's not certified. So we have to make sure our people don't get caught up in the, the spin that's out there 
the, all the fodder that's been said, like, and like the process has never been that. So another civics lesson, but the problem is that many times, and I can remember 2000 election, uh, Bush v. Gore, they ended up in the Supreme Court, and it was over 500 and something votes in Florida, right? Where at the end of the day, people lost the core of public opinion. People didn't understand. And you had people showing up trying to stop, uh, actually not trying, actually stop the counts in, in South Florida and Miami and, and Palm Beach County. But they used to, for those who've been around a while, I remember those who studied it, hanging chads, right? Um, so we know that um, history has shown us what can happen when people really get aggressive about stopping uh, uh, vote counts. And so you have people who are uh, uh, the president and others who are sending uh, signals to white supremacist groups to, 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 to uh, go ahead. It's okay to try to run off uh, your opponent's campaign bus in Texas. I mean, it's things that we just not, so the idea of making sure that we're safe, our people are safe at the polling places uh, is very, very much on our minds. Um, and I know that in some places you have militia groups, you know, who, who, who you know, who have been doing things like stopping, um, uh, trying to ride through black neighborhoods and, and create problems. And so uh, we don't know what all is gonna happen, but we know that we're, go we're telling our folks, don't get out of those lines, you know, um, stand strong, but also trying to make sure that we uh, provide as much um, support in, out there in the field with uh, our organizations that are working, working very closely with A. Philip Randolph Institute, with Clayola Brown, uh, who uh, has, uh, they're in even more states than what, what, I, what I named, and just giving our, our folks the information they need and um, praying that God will protect our people um, in this moment. And we, I believe that what we're seeing is this moment where this nation will either, as flawed as it is, it is a representative, representative democracy, uh, supposed to be, right? But it will end up in an autocracy where you have one person controlling. This is where this, look, this is where this, what, we, what, ha, what has been allowed to happen in any other country, the United States would be sanctioning. They would say, this is not democracy. That's right. People have a right to vote without fear or intimidation. That's right. That's, right. that's not what we're going through right now. No, there'd be, a, if this were any other country, there'd be election monitors and yeah. all of that would be going on. Right. Um, well, the mon well, I just saw something earlier today where uh, the current U.S. Justice Department is sending monitors out. Uh, my concern is those monitors won't be there to protect the voters, but will be there to look for for non-existent voter fraud. So right. there's another component of concern we have as well, but we don't, we're not gonna stop. We're not gonna let off the gas. And our folks are out there, uh, our organizations and many organizations that you've already mentioned and so many others, you know, um, that are out there doing good work and we're gonna do what we gotta do. Um, how important is, is this the year when the black women's electorate is even more important than ever before? Uh, well, you know, you know, I always call the phrase, we are the secret sauce, right? Because we don't just take ourselves to vote. We bring our significant others, our children, our husbands, our partners. Uh, we, uh, and that's been the role we play, but we've um, also uh, owned that power unapologetically in, in much more um, profound ways. We, um, and not in my day job, just as Melanie Campbell, uh, work with a lot of sisters to really, um, um, advocate for uh, the first black woman to be uh, uh, on the top of a ticket as a vice president, Kam Kamala Harris. Uh, also really pushing uh, to make sure that our issues are, are, are also front and center. Um, and so uh, black women are, are owning that power. And we own it. If we, if I always tell folks, if we do well, the, it's, for, it's for everybody. That's just, that's our role. Um, and it's not against, some folks want to make it against Brothers, because it's not, it's, it's nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with saying that God gave us a gift of this power. We got to use it so our community communities can move forward. Absolutely. And, and have quality of life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. Owning the power, not just for the individual, but for the collective. Mm -hmm. We wow. have to use that benefit. 
um, black men are being disproportionately mm -hmm. targeted for suppression and disinformation, like you said, lies. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. is there any special message you'd like to make to black men tonight? Own your power. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you know, don't don't feel you who who's black women are the, the not aren't the problem, right? And most black men are voting. Most black women are making it because I'm not telling people who to vote for, but make sure you got the information, right? Make sure you know. Don't go. I, I tell and I get into these challenges with some of my younger uh, staff and others um, when we talk about looking back at people's past. I say all we gotta do is look in the mirror and see what you know. Would you want to be judged only by what you didn't do right, and then make a better decision than what somebody else is telling you? Right. And then at the end of the day, you have to look and make a decision and not voting. Yes, it's a decision, but it's also you, you, you're you you're disempowering yourself. It's not the only two, but I always believe it. And I'm not the only one. We hear it all the time. And it's the truth. Live long enough to know. If somebody trying to take something from you, there's a reason. And if ever we thought our vote um, uh, um, mattered, look at what they're trying to do to make sure that the black votes get they're trying to throw out 127,000 votes uh, in in those who know Houston is in Harris County. Who live in Houston? Black black people, Latino people, trying to throw out that many votes to try to sway the the, the impact of uh, black and brown people in Texas, right? So there's something to that, right? Yeah. Uh, trying to block uh, uh, urban centers, places like Philadelphia. Uh, just to, to have partisan gain. That's just the facts. So young people have so much power, so much power, uh, 18 to 24, 25 to 35, you all are the largest vote block for black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the power. And young black men, mm -hmm. you got the power. And that's what we've been, we've been hosting kinds of conversations kind of, and, and, and having brothers intergenerationally share and we know that we're all going through and there's no exact perfect situation but just don't dismiss your power and just let somebody give you some okie doke mess telling you to, to write in a name that has no shot in winning yeah yeah that's disempowering yeah. you yeah yeah right? no yeah you're absolutely right and again yeah. like i say most black men are, yeah. are voting it's mm. just the ones that you hear all this uh, to get the attention and then and that was what i said to brothers encourage brothers to to know to own their power right. that's what right. women are doing we're just owning it so just own that in a way but you also have to do your homework so that you know how to leverage that um just for a moment i want to look beyond tomorrow mm -hmm. there are still priorities we must have as yes. a people no matter who wins correct right. very much so very much so um you know you know i you know we always try to do our research you know we just released about three weeks ago uh with our black women's roundtable essence poll we release every year power to sister vote poll and it's all about that affirmation right it's this affirmative statement Power of the vote is not just a vote, it's power of, of dealing with our issues. And so for the last three years, we've done this for six years now, yeah. And for the last three years, um, racism and hate crimes was number one. Um, but what was different this year, that tended to be um, a question that folks felt was the number one issue around the community. But when we asked the question about um, uh, what you want the presidential candidate uh, to to uh, respond to this, they said racism, hate crimes, eradication of structural racism, systemic racism was number one. I'm across, and I'm talking across generations. Uh, what's what's uh, having a, a impact on the community? Uh, co your concern, or you personally, rather, excuse me, uh, racism and hate crimes was number one. Um, uh, uh, criminal justice and policing reform was number two. Um, we also have. Uh, concern around COVID-19. Um, affordable health care is still up there. So it was really a, uh, what was different uh, was uh, over the last three years. It's really about, been about 
uh, life or death issues, right? Things that impact uh, 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 survival um, and stability and safety. Um, and so that's a uh, part. So we know that's for the Black Women's Roundtable is where we do most of our policy work through. It is a priority whoever gets elected, not just in the White House, but also the Congress and the Senate. And then also local, because a lot of these things, we talk about police reform, it's very much uh, mostly a local matter. So it uh, helps us to, to know what Black women are thinking and what our concerns are so that we're not um, you know, sitting in, a, in an office somewhere assuming we know, but we try to ask Black women. And then we do an exit poll that, that uh, where we have fielding as we speak uh, do, uh, this year that will also uh, find out from folks you know, what were they concerned about, what, why did they vote, and what do they think is most important um, for them. So we try to use the research to help us do our organizing. And, um, and so a lot to do. Are, are there any uh, hot spots, Melanie, in terms of the battleground states that you're most concerned about tomorrow? Um, uh, yes, uh, Pennsylvania, um, concerned about Florida, um, um, concerned about um, those are the top two. And of course, we, uh, but I know that uh, everywhere we are, we're assuming that people can uh, may show up to try to stop the count. So our whole focus is no matter what happens, we want to inc we want to really push for all eligible votes to be counted because there's so many other races that are taking place besides the president and the Congress. And so that's a immediate thing that we've been pushing and we'll push together and trying to get as many of our uh, community as possible to focus on, um, um, to focus on making sure we're, we're monitoring uh, boards of elections uh, to make sure that the votes get counted and working with our civil rights uh, colleagues and, and, and voting rights groups like Lawyers Committee and the LDF and others and really pushing to make sure that um, that we, we continue with a legal strategy um, and a and then it's also about public opinion. Uh, that's what Florida was like. It was like people decided this was um, when uh, Gore conceded right. and uh, Bush said he won and then Gore came back, right? That's a political part of it. But then there's the legal kinds of um, attacks that we have to worry about that because of the Voting Rights Act uh, being struck down as far as um, the, the, um, the teeth of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in 2013 with Shelby versus Holder, hate to get into the weeds, but those things seven years later, we're living through that. People can make these decisions and change these uh, polling locations and all kinds of stuff and not have a justice department uh, that's going to fight for the vote and a Supreme Court that is really um, legislate from the bench in a way that we've not seen in recent history. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that stuff adds up cumulatively. It adds up. This court is going to, I think, hear another case soon that could further do damage in terms of our voting rights. Right. Um, so all of this is on the table. Melanie, as we go, mm -hmm. make the final argument, the closing argument, the final charge for what everybody ought to be doing between tonight and tomorrow, including y'all. Y'all checking on your loved ones. Are you calling? Yes. yes. Yeah, right? If you've already voted, call your call your family, call your friends. You are the influences of your. We are the. We are the influences. We don't. We, we don't have to look for somebody else with a name to tell us. But that, just getting that call from Auntie, you know, saying you know, don't call me if you don't have that sticker on you. You know what I'm saying? We know how to get our folks to do what they need to do, um, and just um, pray, pray. Yeah. Organize, 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 and keep pushing. We're not letting off the gas. And 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 really, November 30th is the beginning uh, for us to really. Um, all this year we've been dealing with you know black lives matter and uh all the uh, issues around justice and and um this covid and uh, a, a runaway you know government uh from the top we got a lot of work to do amen, amen. first order of business is to make sure that that we we vote um vote 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 yeah yeah get out and vote tomorrow folks we love you melanie we're so Thank glad you. you're better 
and uh, continue to be better. And we thank you, folks. Even though she was ill, she kept working. She was working at the hospital. She came out the hospital. Got in trouble for that. <laughs> I know. I know. She came out the hospital working uh, because she understood the importance, and she also understood that what she was dealing with was a result of, of public policy and public health policy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when just some random, this should have been handled better. So your yeah. vote, you, you know, we you got to vote about that too. This is about our health, our well-being, all of those things on the table. So please, please, ma'am, please, sir, vote. Melanie, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. All right. And and we will talk, okay? And, we, of, uh, and we're going to talk about another oh, thing too once we get past this. We're going to have to yeah. do a little bit of reckoning in our own house. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are yeah. we gonna wait? But with you know, let's get past tomorrow. Get past tomorrow, and then we are gonna come together, y'all. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank I'm you, Melanie. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye.